the make constraint and make blended tools here in the constraint section of the panel allow you to set up quick constraint items for things. They're the only tools on this part of the panel that require the store assignee and assignees are stored and assigned constraints in a very similar way to that which the assign section on the settings part of the panel. The tools can work two ways, either creating a direct constraint item for something which you would then control or animate or whatnot itself, or creating that item parented automatically to another item to create an offset constraint. So, for example, here I have my light selected. I'm going to store the signee, and then without selecting anything else, I'll just click Make Constraint. You see that a small null has appeared there, entitled the Light Constraint Control, and the light is fully constrained to this null like this. Of course, notice that these tools are aware of the channel selection options here. So if I select my camera, and I'm going to leave just the position channels active, I'll store assign E, make constraint. You can see then that our camera, of course, follows its constraint item in position, but not in rotation, or of course, in scaling. To use this to create a positionally offset constraint, you simply select a second item. So for instance, I could select my camera, choose store assign E. I could then select the light here and click make constraint. You'll see that a constraint object has been created for the camera in the camera's current position. And we see that the camera is constrained to that item, which of course has been made a child of the light. This of course allows you to set up quick offset parent constraint for things in a way similar to the constraint method in the create group tool. As such, I could select all four of these cameras here, choose store to sign E, come to the light, click make constraint, and we see that all four cameras there have of course been given constraint items which are a child of the light and thus they are parent constrained like this. The make blended option does exactly the same thing except it sets up a constraint blend for you. So once again, I'll take the camera here. I will store a sign E on it, come to the light, and this time click make blended. We see that we get the little constraint object created there, but we also have this green null, which can be dialed on its pitch between zero and 100 degrees, which represents zero to 100% constraint. You'll notice that when we are at zero, the light moves like this, leaving the camera completely free and not constrained. But when we drag the constraint up to 100%, the camera is now fully constrained to the position of that constraint item. Again, you can use this just to create constraints for single items. So with the light selected here, if I store a sign E, choose no other item and click make blended, then we see that we just get a scene level item here created for the lights constraint. And again, we have a switch that allows us to blend that constraint on or off. Of course, this make blended will also operate on multiple items, just like the regular make constraint. So you can start to do all sorts of fun things where we'll select, say, all four cameras here, do a store to sign E. Let's do them only on position. Come over to the light, click make blended. As we see, what we then have is four individual blends for our cameras there. Thus, each camera can be blended individually as to whether or not it will obey the constraint and we can see this behavior here. The great thing about these make constraint tools is that they're very useful for animators. It's not uncommon that an animator needs to set up a constraint in a scene, but doesn't like having to go fiddling around with all of the settings to do it properly and correctly, and often much more so doesn't like having to go and set up the expressions to make a blended constraint work in some way. The other really powerful feature of the make blended constraint is the fact that it can be stacked. So what we've got here is we've got our fella and he's wearing this helmet, could be a hat, but there you go. And you can see that the mesh for that helmet is not actually skinned to the head. It is rather parented to the head bone there. It is its own mesh. Perhaps we would like him to be able to, you know, at some point during our animation, reach up 
and take this helmet off. So we take his arm, pose him grabbing hold of his helmet there, perhaps, you know, rather poorly, but of course, you know, you would set your grab nicely. And to allow me to constrain, all I do is select the helmet, choose store assignee, come over to the hand bone here and choose make blended. We see that we have our little blend constraint item pop up here. Obviously by default it's at zero so we move the arm like that and nothing's happening. We can see here of course that is the constraint item for the helmet. But when we throw this constraint to 100% we see that the helmet has of course now been fully constrained to the hand there. So that's pretty delightful. We can have characters pick things up and put them down quickly and simply just by using that make constraint. However, as I said, we can stack and layer these constraints. So let's say that we were wanting him to pass it from this hand to now the other hand. So we'll just bring that hand in here to wherever it would be grabbing hold of the helmet, something like this. We select the helmet again, choose store assignee, choose this second hand bone here and click make blended again. We get another control pop up. Of course, default to zero, so at the minute we've still got that constraint there going on. But now I'll throw this second constraint over to 100%. And as we can see, we are no longer constrained to this hand here, but are now constrained over to this one. I then want him to go and put the helmet back on his head, so that's fine. We'll just, of course, position the helmet there. He'll go and he'll put it on his noggin. There we are, something like that. We take the helmet, we key it in place, of course. We can take both of these constraints, we can throw them back to 0%, and of course we see that the helmet is now fully unconstrained and of course just stuck back in its parent head space like this. There you have it. Those are the make constraint and make blended constraint tools on the rigging toolbox.